Hi, I'm Jan Molden. I'm one of the assistant directors for competitive events with hosts of Future Health Professionals. I've spent 24 years in the classroom, retiring last May. Today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite brain teasers, bell ringers with you. We'll also be sharing more on the website as we move along. One of the things I wanted to start with today is to just make sure that you're taking care of yourself. I know it's been a crazy whirlwind for teachers. I can't say that um, I had bad timing with my retirement, but I found this that I thought might be helpful. Somebody had shared it with me, and I just wanted to um, share it with you. It's tips for balancing work and life while teaching remotely. I mean, all of us are learning new tricks, uh, so I think it's really important that we do the best we can to keep ourselves to where we're able to meet our students' needs. So let's start with some bell ringers. I really like bell ringers because it gives something for the students to be focused on while I'm doing the mechanics of getting class started, taking role, that kind of thing. So the first one I wanted to share with you is Medical History Hero. What I did was I had the students pick a figure in medical history that they admired, and then they wrote a letter to them. They explained in the letter why they admired the accomplishment, and then I had them explain how it impacted their life and society. And this particular activity would be great to lead into exploring medical innovations or medical innovations itself. The cost of technology. I think if you've been in the classroom or around any teenagers, you know that their smartphone has become just an appendage of them. And there's a lot of discussion about the benefits and the negatives of our technology. Uh, my understanding is that the next edition of DSM will have smartphone addiction included. So have your students imagine that they had to give up their smartphone and explain three ways that they would be impacted, both negative and positive. And this hosts a connection would be research, persuasive writing, and speaking. Another example is what are the three most prop most pressing. Another one is what are the three most pressing health problems in the United States today? What ideas would you suggest to address these problems? One of the things I found in the classroom is that students all didn't always keep up with current events like I would have thought they would. And so really making them think about what's going on in the world is really important. The HOSA connection for this one, community awareness, public health and health education. Can't seem to get myself to where I'm not blocking your view. I always like to talk with the students about who felt they could be a pediatric nurse and who didn't and why or why not. And somebody shared this video not long ago that I really enjoyed. A lot of these kids you know, at their worst and then at their best at the very end, and you see that they progress and get so much better. And, you know, it's very just, it's, it's so heartwarming. And every day we're here, you know, I feel like we touch the lives of each and every one of them. I love kids. I love humanity. Taking them to their highest potential, to another level. That's why I'm a nurse. That's why I'm here. I mean, I love coming to Children's because it's the whole package. I love the people that I work with. I love the mission and the vision of the hospital. I couldn't come here every day if I didn't 100% subscribe to what this hospital believes in. I lost my mom at a young age. And I watched all the wonderful nurses help take care of her. And I wanted to give back. And I wanted to be a nurse. And I wanted to take care of children. Just to make a difference in their lives. Change an outcome. I just love working with the pediatric population. Working with children has amazing benefits. I feel like it keeps me young. I'm always very energetic because they give such positive energy. Working with kids is really my passion. I love kids. 
I think that pediatrics is more fun. You have to be a little bit more creative, but isn't that the fun part of nursing, is being innovative and creative? You have to be caring, you have to be passionate, and you can do all of that here in psychiatry. Nursing is evolving every single day. There's so much you can do with a nursing degree. There's so many different paths you can take. You don't just have to be at the bedside. I love being in home care services. The experience is completely different. Being able to go to these children's home and give them the top quality care that children is known for is really an honor. There's so many things you could do in nursing. It's finding that one thing that you feel in your heart is where you're meant to be. That's where you're going to make a difference. I got into nursing because I wanted to make a positive difference in people's lives. So it gives me that opportunity. And to be a part of a healing process for them. I can't even explain it. I mean, it causes me to tear up. When you see a smile on a family's face, or especially the patients, and you know you've made a difference, it's like the best feeling you can ever have. It is just not a job. It is our calling. You really do have to love what you do. Oh, I love what I do. I'm here every day. <laughs> Apply to be part of our team. Contact us at Nurses for Kids at cchmc.org. Okay, so just a brief video to let them think about, is that their calling? Some brain teasers that I use, these first three are pulled from the Daily Spark Critical Thinking warm-up activities. It's a little book I bought, didn't spend a lot of money on it. It has about 180 of these that you can use. The first one, a car tower rolls over a pebble on the road, as in the diagram below, and then the students are to pick which arrow. And this is a connection to forensic science. Due to the force from the car, the pebble would be kicked up direct, directly upward. It appears to be kicked back, but they just go up and then move back down. The next one is a team of researchers randomly called 1,000 people at home between the hours of 11 and 3 p.m. trying to determine the number, the percentage of the population who had full-time jobs. After the survey, they found that only 60 percent had full-time jobs. So the assumption was that there is a crisis of unemployment in the country. What you want to have them do is figure out what's wrong with this statement. If you're calling between 11 and 3, then most of the people you call at that time of day are not employed. So, of course, your statistics are going to be higher. And then the last one is a slide with a certain amount of bacteria is supposed to double every hour and basically they give you the time that the slides covered with bacteria so at what time was it halfway covered so if it doubles every hour then it would be and it was completely covered at 5 p.m. then the slide would have been half covered at 4 p.m. There's some stories that I like to use in my classroom for different uh, units. For the health career unit, uh, and these both came from Chicken Soup for the Teenage Soul. Sparky is the story of overcoming obstacles. It's a real short read, but one that tells them to never give up. And then Betty Ann talks about cultural differences, and it also talks a lot about how students treat each other. So a little bit longer, but both well worth your time in class, I think. And then I use Gifted Hands. Uh, if you are in my beginning class, then you would read Gifted Hands and have a written test on it. These are just some ideas that I used in my classroom over the years that have worked well for me. We'll be... Uh, giving you some more of these favorite things from Carrie Staub and I as we move forward and hope that they'll be helpful as you begin teaching your classes. Thanks for your time.